Okay, everybody, this is Moody Dashcam. Today we are in Island Park in Nassau County, Long Island, and we'll be visiting the house of Paul Vario. Vario, Vario. Roast me in the comments about it. All right, so we're heading to one of his homes. He was born in Brooklyn, moved out to Long Island to the house that we're visiting now, and then back to Brooklyn later on after he was getting some heat from Long Island authorities. He moved to Flatlands. All right, so his life was very crazy. Um, I'm just going to give you the highlights of kind of the craziest that there was, just so this video is interesting, because I could go on for an hour in this video. All right, so he was a Lucchese captain, and at one point he was an acting consigliere which is above captain and um i believe at one point i heard it mentioned that he was an underboss but there's like speculation on that it's not 100 percent proven all right i probably should have made the turn before this would have made my life a little bit easier So he was known as like a pretty ruthless boss. He started in crime when he was super young. When he was 11 years old, he got sentenced to seven months in juvenile detention for truancy, which I had to look up. It's pretty much for skipping school. Um, I didn't realize it that young. I mean, this is a back a while ago. This is in 1925. So he gets arrested for that, I guess and spent seven months in juvie. Um, yeah, just to put it in perspective, he was born July 10th, 1914. And the address that we are visiting today is 132 Island Parkway in Island Park. We're literally going over a bridge. We're on Long Island to begin with. Then Island Park is an island. And then off that island is where, is another island that he lived. Kind of crazy. He, was, he wanted to be separated from everybody. And, this is the way to do it. So yeah, like I said, first time behind bars at 11. And then after Sonny Francis, who I have a whole video on, I will put that link in the description. After he got his 50 year sentence, um, he was well known for running Long Island at the time. And all those operations had to go to somebody. And Paul Vario was the one who took most of that over. Two other captains of two other crime families wanted to take that, and they didn't get any part of it. A Genovese captain and a Gambino captain. Um, also, he was one of the main characters, not him, but he, Paul Sorvino played Paulie Cicero in Goodfellas, just known as Paulie in Goodfellas. So it was a big, big character in Goodfellas. Had a lot to do with the Lufthansa heist. All right, let's not blow any stop signs here. We're gonna be going over a bridge in a minute here. So yeah, he was a six foot four, 240 pound dude. He was known as like a sloppy, hoodlum, like slob type guy. Really, really rough around the edges. A lot of people looked at him as like low class, but he made a lot of money for the mafia and he was a feared, well-respected in that regard, um, boss, captain, not technically a boss, but had a huge crew. He had one, he ran one of the biggest crews in the mafia with like the most made men that has ever been around. So like I said, I'm just gonna go off some of the crazy stuff that he did. Uh, he was part of a ton of legit businesses over the years. A florist that a lot of mobsters got uh, flowers from. Of course, I mean, his friends are gonna use his business. A taxi business, a bagel shop, a restaurant, nightclubs, junkyards, and used car lots. He okayed the Lufthansa heist over the phone, which was kind of against how he, um, how he operated. He did not like to speak over the phone about anything. He didn't even own his own cell phone. He would borrow other people's cell phones or go to pay phones. And uh, 
when he was involved in meetings, he did not like it to be multiple people. It was very rare there was more than one or two people that he was talking to because he did not want to be involved in any um, informants or anyone who he didn't really trust. And he okayed the, um, the heist by just saying, do it over the phone, which I think is pretty cool. And <laughs> he once corrupted 24 prison guards at the Nassau County Jail to smuggle in liquor, food, women, and drugs to him and his mobster friends that were all locked up in the jail together, which I think is pretty great. Not great, but you know, in the context of what we're, what we're talking about here. Okay, now to the right is his house. We're gonna go left and we're gonna shoot around. To make sure I can fit everything in this video because there's a lot to cover party there going on Sunday. Now, uh, like I said, he owned junkyards. One of them was in Canarsie, Brooklyn. I think a few of them are there. Uh, law enforcement placed bugs in one of the trailers there. And it was kind of like his headquarters slash meeting place for a little while. Uh, they caught cops, lawyers, politicians, mobsters, associates, and just regular businessmen through these bugs in this, um, in this one trailer that resulted in over 600 subpoenas served to all different people pretty insane all right i'm gonna go down his the crimes that he was involved in i'm gonna run through them. bookmaking dice games loan sharking extortion these are kind of all the stuff that a regular mobster is involved in but his list is pretty long i have to say uh, labor union rackets, bribery, strong arming, hijacking, auto theft, chop shops, fencing stolen cargo, credit card rackets, narcotics, airport rackets, and murder, of course. Gotta have murder in there. Now, Island Park is an interesting area. It's, it's a mix of, like, residential and industrial. Like, not this area. This is more just residential, but most of Island Park has an industrial feel to it and look to it it's just it's like chunk yards and stuff okay now Paul's youngest son burned to death at 23 years old carrying out orders for his father to commit arson on a building or a house I'm not exactly sure which is terrible of course but it is, it's terrible there's no but about it um now, at the funeral, two cameramen, just TV cameramen, were badly beaten trying to record. And even a police detective trying to stop the mobsters from beating the cameramen got scuffed up a little bit in the brawl. It's crazy to think that. Um, another crazy off-the-handle story is one time a waiter spilled, a wife, uh, spilled wine on his wife at a restaurant. And one second here, I gotta make sure I'm turning at the right spot. Yeah, a waiter spilled wine on his wife at a restaurant, and I think he punched the waiter a few times, and the waiter, like, waiter ran off into the kitchen and kind of got out of his way. And then later on, Henry Hill says this, the notorious Henry Hill from Goodfellas, who cooperated and kind of told all the stories of what I'm telling. A lot of the information that we get about Paul Vario is from Henry Hill. But... Henry Hill and a, and a bunch of guys went to that restaurant later and just knocked a bunch of heads. Just caused chaos in the whole uh, the whole scene. I'm gonna turn here. We should get a nice straight shot of the house. Wait a second. So those are most of the crazy stories. I'm gonna run down a list of his arrest record which is the longest arrest record I've ever seen of anybody ever. I just did a video on, um, wow, the name is slipping my head. Carmine Fatico, and he had a pretty ridiculous arrest record. But um, I would have to say this one beats it. I would have to say. Garage is open. It's that house right there. 
with the tan brick. I'm gonna pull up right in front so you can get a good view. I don't wanna alert any people here. Okay, so this is the house that he lived at. Now, I'm gonna go over his arrest record. I wonder if these people are here to bother me. Nope. His arrest record, burglary three times, rape three times. Now, a lot of these come with a sentence. The rape, the three rapes got him 10 to 20 years. Grand larceny, assault. Operating an unregistered still, 14 months. Bribery, two times. Unlawful flight, pretty interesting. Failing to buy a gambling tax stamp. Bookmaking, six months. Drunk driving. Loan sharking, two times. Civil contempt, four times. Hijacking conspiracy. Interstate theft. Criminal contempt of court, seven times. Income tax evasion, two times, got six years. Witness tampering. Insurance fraud. Obstruction of justice, got five years for that. Conspiracy, defrauding the federal government, four years. Fraud, racketeering conspiracy, racketeering, extortion, and conspiracy. Now, a lot of the information that I got was from a very good blog, Button Guys of the New York Mafia, just had to shout them out. Um, he ended up dying May 3rd, 1988, in a Texas prison from lung failure from cancer. So, he got what was coming to him. Now, we're going to do the infamous driveway pulling U-turn here to finish the video off. This is Paul Vario's former home. It's a nice house. It's right on the water. If you didn't realize, we are right on the water. All these houses in front of us have a backyard on the water. All right, and that is pretty much everything I have to tell you about Paul Vario. In this video, I'm sure I'll be making other videos about him. There are tons and tons and tons of stories. Um, hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Whoa, did anyone see that U.S. bomb right there on the lawn? Okay. All right, see you in the next video. Bye.